match is number one contender for the championship but if you lose you go back to the bottom well there you have it stipulation has been this is a, like a triple stipulation here number one it's a dog collar match number two it's a number one contenders match and number three you got to be uh you got to be opening up every show for the next six months he's not a sideshow attraction is what Ken Andrews is in there saying, but unfortunately, he's gonna be chained across the ring from the jacked jerk. Not, a, not a man you wanna be connected to physically in any way, shape, or form. No. Now, I'm sure neither man had this in mind when they pled their case. However, if you look at the, look at the difference in dispositions, between these two men, Rex Taylor is clearly ready for this, and Ken Taylor, I don't think, I think would want to be anywhere but here right now. Look at him, he's trying to leave. Well, what did he think was gonna happen? He doesn't, does he have a dog? Does he understand that if you chase them, they can't leave? There is no escape, as Mark Mesmer stated before, and now Rex Taylor, knowing what's on the line, knowing what's at stake, is teeing off on all cylinders. Oh, and a big clubbing blow to the back. Rex Taylor feeling it as he wraps that dog chain around Ken Andrews' neck. Taylor clearly ready, willing, and able to sacrifice Ken Andrews at the altar of number one contendership here. Wants that title back around his waist in the worst way. Ooh. Utilizing that chain is completely legal in this match. And but people may not understand, not realize one of the most dangerous elements of a chain match is while you're fighting against your opponent, that chain is 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 just fling, being flung back and forth in all different directions. You never know when you're going to take a couple links to the bridge of the nose or the side of the head and knock it loopy. It's also pulling on that collar on your neck. Essentially cutting off oxygen. That's right, and of course, the rules are incredibly laxed in a dog collar match, which means you can easily use said dog collar chain to choke your opponent without being worried about uh, being disqualified. Cover. And I don't know if the camera picked it up, but Rex Taylor, I don't know if he meant to or not, <laughs> draped the chain over the eyes of Ken Taylor as if to, to, to let him know that even if he oh, even if he opened up his eyes all he was going to see was the element of his destruction however I think Ken Andrews just found a way to change the, the, the turn of the tide oh. it's so important to know the surroundings including that chain this is the first time both of these men are competing in a dog collar match against each other. That's right, they have faced off against each other in the past, but not like this. And Ken Andrews using that chain. Just grinding it into his like into his upper back between his shoulder blades. This trapezius, his his gigantic trapezius muscles. I don't know if this is smart, Jordan. I don't know if grandstanding like this is a smart thing to do against a guy like Rex Taylor. Not in a dog collar match. Oh, God. But, but Ken Andrews seems to be in con firm control here. There's no arguing that. And he just he just whipped the kidneys of, of uh, Rex Taylor there. Whoa. Sends him over the top rope. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Just hanging Rex Taylor. I don't know if he landed wrong or not, but he just instantly went nearly lifeless. Oh my goodness. The neck. All sorts of torque being applied to those muscles. But oh. wait a minute, speaking of muscles, the jacked jerk utilizing his. 
Oh, oh, oh my God. And pulls Ken Andrews up and over the top rope. And as Rex Taylor incorporates his musculature, Ken Andrews incorporates his vocal uh, cords as he squeals going over the top and now being thrown face first into that ring post. Oh. And I don't know if you can notice, but m many other uh, uh, rings, the ring posts are round. These are, are they're square shaped. So there are corners on there that can catch you, give you, easily give you a, a, a mouse on your, on your eyebrow. Oh, oh man. Yeah, exactly. Ken Andrews needs to be very careful. You could catch an edge with that and completely change the course of this match. You could be bloodied and it'll affect your vision. That's right. Even if it's just a, a, a just a, a random hit to the to the face or your nose, you're gonna your the hit to the nose is gonna water up your eyes. It's gonna make it difficult to see. Knock off your equilibrium as well. No, oh, but Ken Andrews utilizing that chain again. Oh, just nasty stuff. How many times could the human body be whipped with a chain and keep going? Well, you can see the welts already starting to. Uh, to, to, to show on the back and the shoulders of Rex Taylor. You know, psychologically, I feel like Rex Taylor had the advantage in this match. He's, he's known for being incredibly focused and uh, in, tune, in tune with his goals, very goal-oriented, whereas Ken Andrews has been a little more uh, lighthearted and playful and kind of uh, a showboat. But, but with this extra element, I think Andrews has found a way to give himself the advantage. Taylor able to get the shoulder up, and Ken Andrews taking offense to that. Andrews went for that pin once again, but, but Rex Taylor does not want to find himself at the bottom of the ladder once again. And look he, at him using that collar as a method to pick Rex up. Oh oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful release overhead, belly to belly suplex. I believe Rex Taylor has, has what the sleeping giant has woken. Oh! And a second time. But Pete, I don't know if you noticed this, it's taking each man longer and longer to get up after every fall. Well, it's no surprise and it's easy to figure out why as well. These guys are giving it their all and just, just beating the hell out of each other. Ooh. And the faithful at the Falcon's Nest. Loving this. Oh, nasty German suplex. Saying, you want to suplex me? I got another one. I, I got one for you as well. Oh. And another one. Beautiful. And it's very rare to see a guy the size of Rex Taylor thrown around the way that Ken Andrews is throwing him around. Like you said before, both former heavyweight champions. Ken Andrews will tell you that he was the longest reigning title holder. But that's if you uh, include all of our time off during quarantine. I guess technically he's right. This is true, this is true. All factual information. Cover now. Oh. And Taylor, I was surprised. I thought he was out. I thought he had him. Folks, if you want to let your friends know the crazy action that you're watching right now, make sure to get on the social media and use the hashtag BBE Warfare 3. Let us know what you think. Watching it over on uh, Ticket Life. And a big power slam by Taylor goes for the cover with the leg hooked. Not enough. Only a two count. Both of these guys know what it's like to be at the top of the mountain here in BBE. They know what it feels like to hold that title. They want that feeling yet again. So they're gonna go out, they're gonna do anything and everything they can to, to get that title back. That's right, well, you, once you get a taste, you can't help but try for another bite. As now, Taylor sizing him up. Andrew's out of the way just in time. And it looks like maybe the, the chain caught Taylor in a bad way there in the corner. Taylor seemed out on his feet almost. 
And now oh. precarious position. Oh man. Dangerous position here. Oh, oh man. Exploder suplex from the top rope. Just nasty stuff and it took out almost as much out of uh, Ken Andrews as it, as it did Rex Taylor. And the chains, the chains dropped as well. Who knows if these guys landed awkwardly. That chain could have fallen down, knocking both of them in the head. Referee, up to six count, neither men. Nobody's moved yet. I don't know what happens if it's a double count on. Where does that put these guys with the stipulation? Starting to move. Both Who's gonna men. make it to their feet first? Andrews to his feet, followed shortly by Kenny, uh, by by Taylor, back, back to back. Oh! Both men with chain wrapped fists. Wait a minute, referee checking both men. Calling for the doctor, ringing the. This is a double knockout. Wait a minute. Well, what is? Referee calling for a doctor. The, I mean, the, ch the chain might have legitimately knocked them out. Both guys with their had the same idea, wrapped their fists in that chain, swung for the fences. Doctor calling it, officially. Check, the, checking the eyes, looks like these guys, both these guys are on Dream Street. And now we're removing the, the chain. This match is officially over, but what an ending. Well, is this an ending, Jordan? How, what does this mean as far as the stipulation? The, the winner was supposed to be a number one contender. The loser was supposed to go to the bottom of the, of, the, of the ladder. Now what? What does Mark Mesmer do with this? Well, we're about to find out, I think. Doc, Doc, when, when, when they wake up, let them know that they both lost and they start from the bottom. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, what? <laughs> Mark Mesmer laying down the law here at the Falcon's Nest. Forget that, Mesmer needs to get into his car right now and drive as far away as possible because when these two guys come to and find out <laughs> what happened here and what Mesmer decided, they're not gonna be happy at all. I don't wanna be anywhere near these guys once they figure out what's going on. Mesmer might have more problems than just his phone blowing up. Holy smokes. Folks, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Peter DeLong. Over here is Jordan Loftus, BBE at the Falcon's Nest. At the sold out Falcon's Nest here. Winter Warfare 3 continues on. We've got plenty more action to come.